Hello Cole, this is the testing for your Toyota Crown uh, 04 to 08 or 06 to 08 uh, 3UZ FE VVTi into IS300 uh, plug and play. This is a US 02 to 05 IS300. Uh, so what we're going to do first of all is we're just going to go through the build process. Obviously you've seen the photos I've sent you but for everybody else we'll go through and show you what it all looks like underneath here. Then we'll go through the layout and how it's all fitted and everything. So bear with me a second. Right, so that's all done. So first of all, obviously the engine's not in my half cut, so obviously the way the harness is rooted now is not gonna look exactly like your vehicle. But yeah, so you've got the grommet on there obviously to go inside the actual ECU box where it sits inside there, inside your IS300. Uh, you've got the actual engine harness itself, which is gonna come through here, so I'll just move that out of the way a second. You've got your three body plugs, so this one, the white one at the top there, you've got the gray one underneath, and then you've got the blue one, which in our case is gray, and that's gonna go in a little blue plug over there. Okay, uh, obviously I'm adapting from an IS200 to an IS300, so you'll see I've got my little sort of adapter harness here, but this patch will plug directly into your IS300. So nice and simple in terms of the engine harness. Oh, never mind, this is also your um, canverter device. It's converting the can coming out of the uh, 3UZ six-speed crown to MPX, which is what the IS200 slash IS200 Alteza read. And because this uses can, and not K-line communication like the IS200, IS300, we fitted an OBD2 plug that's gonna live inside your ECU box. So that's the one you're gonna do for diagnostics on that one. And you'll see I've got my OBD2 machine plugged in there. Right, so in terms of how the harness goes, obviously in this case, imagine it's coming out there, going into the fuse box, into the ECU box, and it comes back over here. You've got a mounting point over here where you can P-clamp it to. We've got the coil grounds for this bank over here. Okay, coming down there, you're gonna have a split over there. Now it's gonna split off to go down the front of the engine and down the rest of the engine over there. But obviously out of the split as well, you've got your oil control valve for this bank over here coming off there. And you've also got your uh, coil one coming off there. And everything is obviously all labeled for you as well so you can know exactly where everything goes. Coming down along here, we have another breakout point over here. And this is where your cam sensor for your inlet cam on the left bank is. You've got coil uh, three and coil five. Coming down here, you've got the breakout here for coil seven, which is gonna go over there. Coming further down here, you've got your breakout at the back here, and this is where you're gonna have your sub harness that goes underneath to your knock sensors and everything. I've got some pictures um, of those, so if you wait till the end, you'll see how that all looks underneath there. You've also got your sub harness for your injectors and your ACIS. So again, I've got a video to show you how to install that because they're actually installed onto the intake manifold, you'll see all the injector wires are coming up from underneath there like that. So all the wiring on the intake itself obviously stays as one unit. You just disconnect this one plug at the back. <laughs> also out of here, we've got your pedal plug. So that's gonna go over there. You've got your earth that comes out there. And in your case, because you're running a manual, we've got your reverse plug that's gonna go over there. And that all comes out of this breakout point over here. Coming down here, We've got another breakout point over there. You've got your earth for these coils over there that's coming out over there. Further along here, and sorry, also your coil number eight. Remember this is the right bank, so it's coil number eight coming on here. Coming down here, you've got your second breakout over there, and that goes to your cam sensor for your right bank. And then it comes down to coil six and coil four. Comes further along, breaks out over there, then you've got your coolant temperature sensor over there. You've got your sub harness for your throttle, so that's just a little harness section over there for the six-speed throttle. You've also got your oil control valve coming out of here. And then this one over here, this is your mass airflow sensor. All right, so we make it nice and long because you guys obviously have different pipe configurations and so on, so you've got plenty of length to work with that. Coming down here, 
We're coming down to the alternator. So obviously you have a crown, so you've got the four pin alternator plug. The crown actually uses all four wires, unlike the GS and the LS430. So we don't put this on a sub harness because obviously you can't use any other alternator than a crown with the wiring going directly to the ECU. And then secondly, you've got your O2 sensor coming out there. So there's a little clamp to hold it on there and that goes to that one over there. Right, so let's go around the front now. And obviously this little section that splits off over here comes down here. It goes to your front cam sensor, which is on a clip over there. This little section will clip into these little holes over here. You should have clips there. If you guys want, let me know and I'll get you the part numbers for all of these clips that you can buy new from Toyota. They're not very expensive. Um, I just haven't fitted it because we're building up an engine to actually put on a nice, really nice stand. So I've not bought all the stuff for this one. They're all sitting in boxes aside. But then coming down here, you've got your breakout point over here. So from here, we're breaking out into four different things. Number one, we've got aircon. Now, just bearing in mind, you can't use the aircon pump from the crown. It's not controlled via the ECU. It's actually controlled by the old climate control system inside the vehicle. What we do is we control the AC from our little device over here. And what we need to do is make sure this actually takes readings from the pressure sensor as part of the AC system. So there are the safeties built in where it won't activate there, but it does control the ECU as well. So when I do the testing, you'll see I'll actually press the AC button and you'll hear the RPM actually rise up when you engage AC. Now then, what AC pumps can you use? Pretty much anything from an earlier generation. So in your case, because you're in the US, you can use uh, GS400 98 to 2000, uh, LS400 98 to 2000. Um, you can use uh, GS430, that's 2000, 2005. Uh, SC430 2000 2005 as well. They will all work. They all bolt directly on. You've got to make new aircon lines anyway. Uh, and obviously, if you don't want to use the aircon, feel free to just tuck it back inside this little hole over here because that's where the rest of the harness goes in there. Now, you've also got your lambda plug which goes down there. Now, obviously, in your case, you're going to have a different oil filter because this is what we call the forward facing one that comes on the LS430. You've got a rear facing one. Um, so, this will actually tuck through the hole over there and come out the bottom over there and then literally just go off to the lambda plug there and then your other one that's going through the hole over here finding its way out the back there and off to the crank sensor which is down there okay so those are those wires over there now I've got the oil pressure switch which also makes its way down here and again same like the lambda in your case you're going to want to come out here and then go back and then plug into the oil switch which is going to go there but in our case, we've got to come in down here because we've got the LS431, which is the forward facing one. This one won't work on IS200, IS300 swap. It's going to hit the sway bar. Right, so hopefully that's really nice and easy. All that you have to add to the system is obviously your starter wire. This isn't your starter wire. We just use it because it's a nice long one and it reaches into the car. Your one is all uh, separate and over there. You'll get it in your box with your harness and everything. And then your alternator. So you see on here, you've got your main alternator cable over there. Mine's actually running underneath and it bolts right here in the fuse box. Now obviously your left hand drive, so yours is going to be over here somewhere. But anyway, so yeah, you just need to make that wire to go from there and then reach all of well in your case, you're this side already, so just go straight up to there. Right, okay, <coughs> so <clears throat> what are we going to be testing today? First of all, we're going to go through all the stuff inside the vehicle with just the ignition on, so we're going to make sure all the dash lights work, so that's going to be like check engine light, oil lights, battery lights, all of that communicating from the ECU. We're going to make sure the OBD2 works, so we're going to plug that in, we're going to seal the live data that we see through there. We're going to check the fuel pump works. Now actually, in our case, because we use a little device, it does actually prime the fuel pump, which is not a standard Toyota thing, by the way. If anybody asks, Toyota pumps do not prime if they're wired properly and they're working through the ECU. Uh, then we're going to look at the reverse, so that's, I'm just going to bridge the reverse switch over here. We're using IS200 clocks because they, they go beep, beep, beep when it's in reverse, so we can just make sure that the reverse circuit is complete. Obviously the IS300 clocks don't do the beep in when it goes into reverse, and they communicate it via uh, multiplex, the gear in position indicators. Okay, uh, then we're going to look at the AC, so obviously I'm going to press the AC button in the car. You'll see I've obviously bridged the pressure switch here. They go to ground when everything is okay. So obviously when I press the button, you're gonna hear the relay click. And obviously when the car is running, I'm gonna press the button so you can actually hear the RPM go up effectively to imitate you pressing the AC and to try and keep the idle nice and nice and fine. Right, then obviously what we're gonna do is we are going to go then look at the uh, starter. Now this is obviously when engine running, so it starts, it's a pretty simple test. If I crank the key and it starts, everything is working. 
We'll come back to the clock to make sure that we've got the taco working. So we've got the rev counter there. Now this little device is converting it from a four cylinder to a six cylinder as well. So that taco should be absolutely correct on your vehicle. Then we're gonna look at the ACIS. So that's the acoustic control induction system. Again, I've got a whole video on how that works, what that looks like. Um, so again, if you wanna have a look at that, please feel free to find that video. But yeah, all we're gonna do is we're gonna check that this little valve goes down as soon as you start the car up because their natural position is open, effectively the short intake runner links. So as soon as it starts, it should shut down with the vacuum in the tank at the bottom underneath there, which you'll see when you install the injector harness. Right, then we're gonna test the drive-by wire. That's nice and simple. This is the pedal you supplied from an IS350 or IS250. So yeah, we're just gonna rev it up. You see it's all working. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through all of the injectors one by one. I haven't actually plugged them in all the way, so I'm just gonna boom, 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 take them out one by one, and you can obviously hear the engine misfiring as I, as I disconnect them. Then what we'll do is we'll move over to the um, OBD2 machine, and we're gonna test the VBTI solenoids. Basically what it does is it fully retards the cam, um, so effectively you're gonna hear like a very lumpy engine. So hopefully you'll hear that as soon as I do it, because again, it's very loud with no exhaust on there. Then we're gonna go make sure we got no codes. Now in your case, I'm using an IS200 half cut here. You've got an IS300. And you'll notice on your IS300, you've got a little sort of heat sink resistor somewhere on the strut tower here, or possibly here on the left-hand drive one. That's your fuel pump resistor. So we will have a code where it says fuel pump um, main circuit problem. That's the problem. I can't connect the fuel pump resistor, but it is all in the wiring there. So don't worry about that code, but there will be no other codes for the automatic gearbox or anything like that. All right, and there's one that I seem to have missed off here, but we're also gonna check that the ambient temperature works, and that's gonna be part of the ignition feed. So we're gonna go inside the vehicle here and you're gonna see the actual temperature display, not an error or whatever, when they're not connected up. Right, so let's crack on, and let's get into the testing of the parts with the ignition on. So bear with me a second while I come over, and obviously everything is plug and play. So again, once you've plugged in all the ECU plugs, the patch and the three body plugs, connected the alternator and the starter, you should be ready to go. So we're gonna put the key in the ignition, and then we're gonna turn it on. You can hear the fuel pump prime. Anyway, right, okay, I hope you heard that. But So we've got our charge light here, we've got our oil light here, which will obviously go off when we start the vehicle. Now, little trick with the six-speed models. The check engine light from the ECU is not designed to work with an incandescent bulb. It needs an LED. So if you leave the normal incandescent bulb for the check engine light in here, you're just gonna get a dim check engine light. That's it basically, just a little bit dim. So you can see as soon as I actually go there, it's almost uninvisible. And then as soon as I come in there, you can see how dim that is compared to the other lights over there. All right, so piece of advice, just pull out that little bulb over there. And obviously things like your VSC and TRC are not gonna work, so I obviously pull them out. And unfortunately the crown doesn't have the ability for a low oil level. So the little orange low oil level light, pull that out as well because that's not gonna work either. Okay, so that's all the modifications you've gotta to do to the cluster there. Everything else is gonna work. You're gonna see coolant temp and all of that type of jazz work. Ignore the flashing light by the fuel gauge. That's obviously because, as you can clearly see, I don't have the back half of the car. So obviously there's a problem there. <laughs> all right, so going down the list, we're gonna go through, we've done all the dash lights over there. We're gonna go over to the OBD2. Now this thing is super slow, so I've already gone into it. So all I'm gonna do is show you. Okay, so I'm just on the trouble codes there. Obviously zero at the moment. Right, so you can see over there, we're getting coolant temp 58, intake air 18, etc., etc., etc. And we got all the live data. Okay, so that's working absolutely fine. Uh, fuel pump, we did actually hear it prime. But what we can do is we can go into active test over here. And we can actually control the fuel pump. Enter. And I'm just gonna obviously try and get you over here so you can hear the relay opening up. As right, so you can obviously relay click, and then obviously it's a bit difficult to hear the fuel pump. We've got birds chirping outside you. Right, so that works all fine. Uh, then we're gonna go over to the reverse. So literally all I'm gonna do now is bridge this, which is exactly what your reverse switch will do on your gearbox. And hopefully you can hear the annoying reverse beep. So that's just that bridged over there, which is what your reverse switch will do. So we're happy with the reverse circuits all working. Uh, AC, 
Now what we'll do is come over here. So we're just gonna do two in one. So we've got obviously the ambient temperature working there. It's displaying a temperature. Obviously yours will be Fahrenheit. This is degree centigrade. So as I press the AC, I want you to listen. You're gonna hear the relay click for the AC. Fantastic, okay, so that'll work. We will come back and do that again when the engine's running so you can actually hear the RPM go up as well when you press the AC, so that whole system is working. And like I said, if there's not enough pressure in the system, it will not work. So that's, the, all the safeties and everything are still built in, all the pressure sensors and so on and so forth. Right, so that's everything while it is not running. So what we need to do now is we need to get it up and running and we'll come with the rest of the test. Now it's gonna be very noisy, so I'm just gonna quickly recap because we've been through a lot there what we're gonna do. We're gonna check the startup function by starting it. We're gonna come from the key there around here. We'll check the taco is working. We'll then come around the back of the engine. We'll check that this ACIS valve has closed. Then we'll press the accelerator pedal to make sure that's working. We'll run around and we'll disconnect all the injectors one by one so you can see they're all working. And then we'll come back and do the test for the VVTR solenoids. And we'll go through the codes to show you that there are no codes or anything on the engine. You'll also see when we walk past the lights have gone off. They're all working and the check engine light has gone off as well for no active codes in there that's causing a check engine light. All right, so again, nice and simple. Key in the ignition and three, two, one. Right, so number one, we're happy with that. All the lights have gone off. We've got taco. We've got no check engine light over there. Okay, so, happy with everything. All of the engines, all the cylinders are firing as they should do. Both oil control valves are working as they should do. <coughs> the ACIS system is working exactly as we expected. The drive-by-wire is working exactly as we expected. And uh, we have no codes. Now, you did see over there, fuel pump primary circuit. In your car, that will go away because obviously the fuel pump resistor will be connected there. If you wanna know more information about that whole system, Please feel free, I do have a video explaining how they work and effectively the system like this where it's got the fuel pump resistor is the same as an IS300, it's the same as an LS430. Uh, there were a few models that had a fuel pump ECU like the GS and so on. Uh, they are obviously different but in that video I explain all the three differences between them and exactly how they work. Alright, but I'm happy with that. Everything seems to be working exactly as we wanted to so we'll get this in a box and we'll get it off to you so you can get your engine swap finished. And if anybody else has any questions, anything they'd like to know, please feel free to ask. Um, if you'd like a quote on something like this, again, just message us on our Facebook page. Um, we'll uh, we put, put posts up all the time when we can. Obviously, it's a bit of our busy season now coming up to Christmas and, and in the new year. 
But yeah, that's it. So we'll get this all boxed up and sent off. And Carl, enjoy it. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And everybody else, thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>